Welcome to the show. I'm at the Diversity and Inclusion in India Forum in Mumbai, an event organized by Community Business. And I'm about to speak to Rekha Verma, the Head of Staff Planning and Strategic HR Initiatives at British Council, about the inclusive practices in India. Rekha, the British Council is the world's largest cultural development organization and your presence in India is the biggest in comparison to any other country in the world. You've got 500 staff. What does it mean to be inclusive mm. in India for you? All right. Um, um, well, India is uh, one of the largest operations for British Council globally uh, and we present in 109 countries. British Council is all about, it's a, it's a cultural organization and it's all about bringing people of diverse uh, background together. We do it through our work in education, English, arts, exams and a lot of cultural related work and we cannot bring people of diverse cultures especially in Indian context if our staff does not reflect that diversity but in order to make sure that our staff reflects the diversity we need to be inclusive and we need to be inclusive in the way we recruit staff in the way we manage performance of our staff in the way we train our staff and uh, you know so whether it is a training program or whether it is the events that we conduct for various stakeholders, we need to be representative of the society in which we operate. And that's why for us, while diversity is important, we need to be seen as inclusive and we need to be inclusive to bring that uh, diversity onto the table. Sure. So are there any specific projects uh, that the British Council has rolled out uh, that are very pro-inclusive, not just from the point of view of, of staffing, mm -hmm. but also in, in terms of, you know, cultural development. Mm -hmm. All right. Or so, engagement with, with Indian, yeah. with India as so a country. So the, the approach that British Council follows is, is an approach of mainstreaming inclusion and diversity in everything that we do. We call it equal opportunity and diversity. So everything that we do, whether it is a new policy which gets framed or a new initiative or a new program that gets launched, we need to uh, test it or evaluate it on a program guidelines to mainstream EOND into our programs. It's a very useful document, it's a very practical document. What it helps us is to identify any potential barriers that there may be during the course of our launch of a project or its implementation for people of diverse background. This could be in terms of age, gender, religion, sexual orientation, ethnicity, race, disability. Um, and, and that's why it becomes important for us to make sure that it's, it's mainstream, it's, it's a very integrated approach that we take for, um, for diversity, for, for being inclusive. Sure. So one of the recent initiatives that comes to my mind is um, a study tour which British Council facilitated. And this was a study tour where uh, a group of Delhi University students um, had uh, so British Council facilitated the study trip of disabled students from Delhi University to King's College London and to the University of Edinburgh uh, in Scotland and we did that with um, through partnership with Delhi University and with partnership with uh, University of Edinburgh and King's College London and in order to make sure that this group of students which was representing British Council was um, sensitive to the special needs of not just the disabilities which were presented, reflected in that group, but to the larger uh, disabilities that you see in the society, whether it is wheelchair users, whether it is visual impairment, whether it is orthopedic challenges, there was a sensitization program done for this. And I thought that was a good example of how we mainstream diversity sure, in all our work. Sure. Um, last question to you at this forum. What is the impact that you see of the inclusive initiatives, whether it's internally or externally, you can take I think a it, yeah. context. Uh, I think that's a good question, which may, uh, I think we don't talk about inclusivity as much as we talk about diversity, but there really cannot be inclusivity. You cannot be inclusive or you cannot be, uh, so I think what it means is, it, it, it means that you have to be accepting. Yeah. You have to be aware about what your biases are, whether those are conscious or unconscious. Uh, it also means that you, you challenge yourself sometimes about where your motion, you know, your your notions are coming from, if it's preconceived notions. So it's all about bringing a lot to the forefront, bringing a lot to the front of your mind, being conscious, being aware. It doesn't mean that you will 
not have any bias. You will still have biases. We all have. But it's about being aware and recognize that we have those biases. Sure. So you're saying the impact of all this effort is um, A, the recognition of, of attitudes as well as change in attitudes, change Absolutely. in perspective. Absolutely. And engage with more people with that understanding, with the mm. shared knowledge that you have. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Join our mailing list at chaiwithlakshmi.in forward slash subscribe and keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Pinterest.